Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Three Israelis just found themselves in imminent danger in the West Bank city of Nablus after Palestinians stole their car and then set it on fire. The Israeli army has rescued all three of the Israelis, and thankfully it looks like no one was reported injured. Nablus is in Area A of the Palestinian West Bank, which means it's completely illegal for any Israelis to be there at all. So it's unclear at this time how or even why these Israelis entered the city in the first place. The three violated military law by breaching the city's perimeter, parking their car, and roaming the area on foot. That's when a group of Palestinians stole and then torched their car, leaving all three Israelis stranded. According to reports, the IDF acted immediately, stepping in and making the rescue. Nablus, among other things, is also the site of Joseph's tomb, a place sacred to Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike. Israelis make trips to the tomb by coordinating with the IDF, and the army had actually just approved a thousand Jewish worshippers to visit the site. Ironically, that trip went off without a hitch. Top leaders from Hamas and the Palestinian Authority are now in Cairo for a marathon of fresh reconciliation talks in the quest for a Palestinian unity government. The United Nations is saying that these talks, quote, must not be allowed to fail, end quote, because if they do, a whole new war with Israel would probably be just around the corner. Now, we've been seeing both progress and stumbling blocks in the road to Palestinian unity, but clearly the stakes for these coming days couldn't be higher. That's because some of the biggest issues to iron out are still yet to be decided. Palestinian Authority and Hamas leaders are expected to talk about the actual structuring of how a unity government would look, as well as the possibility of free elections which haven't happened in the Gaza Strip in nearly 10 years. Perhaps the biggest question mark, however, is what will happen with Hamas's massive 25,000-man army. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas has repeatedly applied that the army will need to be dissolved, similar to Israeli and American demands, in order to recognize this unity at all. But Hamas has fiercely refused to lay down its weapons, nor even recognize the Jewish state. So clearly, there are still some major debates ahead. In what may become a major blow to Israeli-Indian relations, reports from the Indian Defense Ministry indicate that a $500 million defense contract with Israel may have just been canceled. Originally devised in 2014, the deal was for Rafael Advanced Defense Systems in Israel to provide the Indian military with half a billion dollars worth of spike anti-tank guided missiles. The newest accounts, however, show that the Indian government has instead decided to look inwards to the DRDO, or the Defense Research and Development Organization, to create their own. Rafael, on their side, has issued a statement that they have no idea what the media is talking about. Quote, Rafael has not been officially informed of any change in the decision to purchase spike missiles. This activity will continue as planned, end quote, says spokesman Ishai David to the Jerusalem Post. Many experts still take the new reports seriously, though, saying there could be many reasons for a cancellation, including a better offer from elsewhere, but that no matter what the reason, it still doesn't bode well for the building international relationship. India has become one of the world's biggest buyers of military tech from Israel. The accumulated worth of such agreements reaches well over a billion dollars. But now, everything is seemingly on the chopping block. Well, less than 24 hours after an Israeli lawmaker basically came out and said Israel has secret ties with the Saudis, Saudi Arabia's foreign minister has denied any such relationship. But even Iran can see through this. They are now accusing Saudi Arabia of pushing a so-called Zionist agenda. Years of rumors about a secret Saudi-Israeli friendship have been all but confirmed lately. A few days ago, the IDF chief of staff even gave an unprecedented interview to a Saudi news outlet saying that Israel was ready to share its intel with the Saudis against the mutual enemy of Iran. But Saudi Foreign Minister Adel al Jubeir is now saying that, quote, there are no relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel, end quote. We should probably take his word with a grain of salt, though. Israeli politicians have pointed out that many of Israel's secret ties with Arab countries can't be made public yet because the Muslim-majority nations simply aren't ready to publicly align themselves with Israel. That's exactly what Iran is picking on now, though, accusing the Saudis of, quote, following the policy of the Zionist regime, which seeks to stoke divisions, end quote, among the Arab nations. So, since it isn't quite official yet, we'll just have to call this relationship, it's complicated, for now. International star musician Nick Cave just finished two sold-out concerts here in Tel Aviv. And true to his expectations, the criticisms from ex-Pink Floyd frontman Roger Waters have started to flood in. In one of many statements made from Artists for Palestine UK, Waters said he felt a mixture of, quote, sorrow, rage, and disbelief while watching Nick Cave's recent press conference defending and explaining his decision to play in the Jewish state. Waters continued to then tell Cave that his issues with censorship are irrelevant in the face of Israel's alleged crimes against humanity. 
crimes that Waters went on to conflate with those committed at Sharpville, Wounded Knee, Ferguson, and Standing Rock, among others. He said, quote, We hurl our glasses into the fire of your arrogant unconcern and smash our bracelets on the rock of your implacable indifference, end quote. Now, even though Waters finished his tirade with a plea for Nick to open his eyes and climb out of the dark, even signing off with Love Roger Waters and Co., you need only look to Nick's earlier press conference for a reply. Cave already stated that he loves Israel and the Israeli people, and that it was in fact the BDS movement itself and the pressure it puts on artists that prompted him to add Israel to his tour in the first place. So I guess in the end, Waters would better fare talking to the wall. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.